Today is Monday, February 13th, 2023, and I'm going to read Isaiah chapter 15. This is another short chapter from Isaiah. It's kind of interesting. There's a lot of variation in the lengths of the chapters here. And it begins, before I even start reading, you can see in the first verse they mentioned Moab. And Moab is this really interesting place in Utah. It, it might go in more than one state, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's in Utah. And I think that way back in the day when the Mormonism cult was being founded, I think that the, the people starting that cult were, they had some hidden knowledge about hidden lands in America, and they, I think they knew, right, isn't, that's part of, like, the lore of Mormonism, that they, that they do believe that USA is important biblical lands, and that they were going and looking for it. I'm not, obviously, I don't support Mormonism, I think it's a cult, and I, th put them in the same thing as Catholicism, people who think that they're Christian, but if you're following what the establishment does, you're not really following Jesus Christ. You're, you're following things that a bunch of people made up, a bunch of men. I mean, Mormonism is even, even worse than Catholicism. But anyways, that's when I see Moab, that's where my mind goes. Utah. Okay. The burden of Moab, because in in the night, awe of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. Because in the night, cur of Moab is laid waste and brought to silence. And a lot of these places in America, in USA, they they just look like they were obliterated, just like erased from the map. And now it's just a wasteland and nobody lives there. It seems like destruction of biblical proportion has happened across USA. Maybe Sodom and Gomorrah used to be here too. The Grand Canyon, if you go and you look at the names of certain places in Grand Canyons, in the Grand Canyon, it's like the Temple of Isis, the Temple of this, the Temple of that. So the Grand Canyon is very likely a place where old megalopolis used to exist and it was just totally erased from the face of the earth. Anyways, uh, he has gone up to Bahith and to Dibon, the high places, to weep. Moab shall howl over Nebo and over Mediba. So again, these are probably metaphorical in nature, I would believe, that they're when they mention these places. Maybe some of this stuff is specifically talking about historical prophecy of places, but I think a lot of times they're using these places metaphorically. Like Lebanon often gets brought up to mention like the strength of something, the cedars of Lebanon. Okay. On all their heads shall be baldness and every beard cut off. In their streets they shall gird themselves with sackcloth. On the tops of their houses and in their streets every one shall howl, weeping abundantly. And Heshbon shall cry, and Alila. Their voice shall be heard even unto Jahaz. Therefore the armed soldiers of Moab shall cry out. His life shall be grievous unto him. I mean, here I think they're just talking about like the breadth of what's happening by mentioning all these various places are probably scattered about. My heart shall cry out for Moab. And Moab too gets used as like an acronym. Mother of all bombs, I know is one that gets used in the military. Really big bombs they'll call Moab, which I'm sure is a biblical reference. My heart shall cry out for Moab. His fugitives shall flee unto Zoar, an ephor of three years old. For by the mounting up of Luith with weeping shall they go, go it up. For in the way of Horoni Naim they shall rise up a cry of destruction. So yeah, I am almost certain that here... Many of these places, while I am sure that they are real historical places, I think that there's more meaning behind each place that they say, I think has a metaphorical interpretation. For the waters of Nimrim shall be desolate. Like, that's probably a place that has abundant waters, which is why they're, they're mentioning this place, the waters are going to be desolate. Just things like that. I think that there's a lot of imagery and... Uh, metaphorical meanings behind these places that today are just lost on us. It would be like 
for the waters of insert something today where there's a bunch of water coming out of it uh, shall be desolate. Okay. For the hay is withered away, the grass faileth, there is no green thing. Therefore the abundance they have gotten, and that which they have laid up, shall they carry away to the brook of the willows. Oh yeah, I always liked that part. Carry away to the brook of the willows. For the cry is gone round about the borders of Moab, the howling thereof unto Aglaim, and the howling thereof unto Beeralim. Just all these different places too. This reminds me of the overpopulation hoax that, that is today. It just seems like there used to be so many diverse countries and peoples. And today it's like all the same thing. It almost doesn't matter where you're born anymore. You're, you almost always get the same culture, more or less, besides a few superficial things. I feel like today it's really rare to be born into like a culture, a place that does everything their own way. I'm thinking like, what are the chances that you're born into like a village scenario today? Probably pretty slim. And how rich are the cultures that do that? I, d I just think of times past had a lot of unique cultures that were rich cultures, not just like... Today, why does it feel like in order to get a culture, you need to be born into some, like, tribe in the middle of nowhere? I think that there there were a lot deeper, more individualized cultures in the times past that were very well established and had cities and such. For the waters, uh, for the waters of Diamond shall be full of blood, for I will bring more upon Diamond, lions upon him that escapeth of Moab and upon the remnant of the land. Anyways, interesting chapter. And leave a comment. What does this remind you of? A lot of destruction going on. And yeah, I think that there is just something to this. They're naming all of these places on purpose because they have some sort of metaphorical significance to them. But it would be interesting to try to to try to figure out the geography and the history through the Bible, I just, it seems like it's, it would be really hard because they talk about things in a way that they kind of just expected you to know. And so much today has been obscured. Like, I, I don't think that you can look up like, oh, where, where is Zoar? I don't think that you can look it up today and really trust the answer that they have. So I don't, it would be a really hard independent thing to try to look up all the references of the Bible to each place and try to reverse engineer what what was going on like i i just have a personal theory that lebanon was like the pacific northwest of of usa that's just my personal theory because we have so many giant tree remains like oregon has this place called table rock and it's so clearly an old giant tree stump that was chopped down and or even still today oregon is known for growing wood to yeah uh, that's basically a bulk of what they do here just grow trees to chop them down a couple decades later but washington too yeah just something about this area is pretty special the fact that oregon's the 33rd state and or the initials for the state or well it means gold in french and then also or is 33 and then washington is the 42nd state and Washington is the state that's named after the big Freemason guy that started the whole fake history crap here. So something special in this land. But also, yeah, in the in the Utah land, something special going on there too. So hope you enjoyed this video. God bless everyone.